York chef and cookbook author Pierre Tam is passionate about sharing his Senegalese culinary heritage with the world. But here in his home country, local farmers are finding it hard to come by some basic ingredients of their traditional cuisine due to climate change. Food is agriculture and agriculture is our cuisine. So yes, I'm concerned, you know, some ingredients I used to see growing up are disappearing. You come and you don't see them anymore. So it's affecting yeah. our boards, it's affecting our livelihood, it's affecting the finished products. As a chef, it's products is everything. And in this part of central Senegal, traditional farming practices are failing as weather patterns change. Unpredictable seasons, lack of rain, and an increase in soil salinity have left local farmers with little produce and less money to afford rising food prices. To find out more, Pierre meets Madame No, president of a local farmers group, and together they will prepare a classic Senegalese dish, chicken yassa. She tells Pierre how her environment has changed over the years. During our childhood, rainfall was abundant. It rained a lot and began very early. In that time, the forest was beautiful, but nowadays we see a degradation of the forest. The rain is very rare, and often it doesn't rain enough. After losing many harvests, Madame No is trying out a different crop not usually grown here and takes Pierre to see it. Her cooperative of 100 women is cultivating rice for the first time ever, and this highly nutritious and fast maturing variety is doing better than their traditional crops. I didn't expect to ever see rice growing in this part of the country. It's just a miracle. I mean, to me, it's like truly seeing independence because Senegal has been importing rice for forever, you know, for like more than 50 years we import rice and we eat rice every day. And now these women are showing us the way to do it. This is just awesome. Although a staple food, Senegal imports most of its rice and is particularly vulnerable to price surges. But now these women are looking forward to a plentiful harvest, enough even to sell locally. They learned about rice cultivation through a project designed to help farmers adapt to their changing environment. Supported by the International Fund for Agricultural Development, or EFED, and the Global Environment Facility, this eight-year project covers almost a third of the country and trains farmers to diversify their produce, reclaim degraded land and use more effective farming practices. Seeing the benefits, other farmers are keen to learn. We give them all the necessary knowledge on good practices related to climate change and better farming techniques. These people share their knowledge with others. They live in the villages, so now this knowledge will always be there, with or without the project. Back home, Madame No and Pierre start preparing lunch, and today she is able to use all her own ingredients. Now if we prepare the yassa, the rice is ours. We have grown it. We've cultivated the onions and vegetables, we raised our own chickens, we have our poultry houses and we're really pleased about it. Through the project, Madame No was also trained in poultry rearing, and now her chickens are healthier, larger and tastier than ever. While the meat is left to marinate with pepper, chili, garlic and lemon juice, Pierre tries his hand at rice pounding. But soon the ladies take over and the cooking begins. I think to the women in the community, they are taking a leadership role in responding in this and tackling this problem. It's still an uphill battle because this climate change is a, is a serious problem of our generation. It's a, it's a global problem. But to see people like Mrs. No and how they, they adapted and, they, and they're facing it, it just um, gives hope. It gives hope.